Hey guys, Kat Kerr, thanks for joining me for September's vlog already. Holy smokes, where did the year go? I feel like it's just running away from me. Um, but for this month, I'm going to um, share some art hacks with you. I'll share some samples. I'll share my favorite color combination, um, as well as some photos of probably my favorite family weekend trip of the year. What can it be? And overall, just some artsy creative goodness. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. And thank you so much for being here. Okay, so the first thing I want to share with you is that I did have a release this month of foam stamps with joggles.com. Always super, super, super excited about that because I love foam stamps and I just find that there's so many ways to use them and I especially love that they're normally pretty big. Um, this is a sample of one of them and you can, I mean, look how big this sucker is. It's pretty big and I love that because you can use it as backgrounds. You can use them on your fabric. I mean, there's just sky's the limit when it comes to foam stamps. So I'm always excited about release. that. Release. It's six stamps. Uh, um, actually, it's a little bit more than six, but I'll explain that to you in just a minute. I have some backgrounds. I have some uh, words as well as some focals in this release, which is, um, I think, a nice balance of um, of different types of stamps. So as far as the backgrounds, this is one of them. It's the one I just showed you a second ago, and it's just quite a you know quite a bit of little markings that make an excellent background. And I also have this one for a background. Please excuse, they've already been lovingly used and so they're they're pretty dirty already. Um, I also have this as a focal, which is a lovely butterfly with some design, as well as this pretty bird. You can see, and again, they are pretty large. Now, as far as the three words, I have the word artist. I have the word becoming, and do you see how big they are? And the word metamorphosis. Now, I mean, this is huge. I can't remember. I think it's like 10 inches, um, 10 inches long, which is absolutely awesome. But what's really, really cool about this SAMP release, do I sound excited? Because I feel excited. <laughs> Um, is that Joggles, Barbovert Joggles, also made the letter, the words, in um, a monoprint version, which means that the three words are also backwards. They're also available backwards for you to be able to use with your mono printing uh, plate. Um, and I just absolutely love that because I use my gel press plate all the time. And so now being able to also have the option of, you know, purchasing the stamp in its normal uh, format where you can stamp it on a piece of paper or a journal or your, you know, clothing or whatever. Um, but also also having the option to stamp them on your mono printing plate so they will be backwards but when you remove the, the print it will be um, correctly placed on the print which is just wonderful so very excited about that um, as far as some of the samples this is one um, it's just to show you that this is a mono print and it came out perfectly on there you can also use these on some fabric. This is just some muslin, and I used um, some Marabou fabric spray on that. And of course, I was telling you that you can make the pattern. I love that. Uh, now, I, for some reason, always gravitate towards making, using acrylic paint with my foam stamps, but there's so many other options, especially um, metallic uh, ink pads, ink pads in general. I just really love the metallic ones, and that's an option. This is one of the journal pages that I created using the butterfly one, which is called Mariposa, which is a butterfly in Spanish. This is that um, textured background. I believe it's called painted brushes or painted strokes or 
And here is that metamorphosis, and this is what I was talking about. It doesn't fit the page. This is a six by six, but I still love it. I love that. So you can use it on a large page if you want to, but don't be limited. You can use these on smaller ones. This is the butterfly again, mariposa, but I used it multiple times on one page. And this is a mono print. Okay, so very, very cool. Um, I also use them in some of the backgrounds. These pages right here, this one and this one, I used the foam stamps. I don't know if you can see on that one. It's there. Um, but I these uh, pages were created for deco arts in a tutorial, and I used the foam stamps um, on the background. And just so you know, also, I created two videos for the uh, release of the foam stamps. The first one being 15 ways, 15 different ways to use your foam stamps, as well as um, a video showing um, three journal pages um, in one. Um, and so I will link all of the videos below the, any video that I talk about um, in this introduction. I will link it below so that if you want to check it out afterwards, you can. This is also a piece that I um, a piece I made. Uh, this is a mono print, um, but it has some of the stamp on the side as well as the word becoming. Again, it didn't fit the page, but. I think that we can come up with different ways to use the stamps, even if they don't fit. And another one. So very, very pretty. Now some of the other things that I uh, created this month, just some um, other journal pages. This was another video where I used one of my older um, Grunge Wheels uh, foam stamps in the background, as well as the triangle. Now the centerpiece is a Dina Wakely um, rubber stamp. And um, I made a video of that. And I forgot to show you this. This is just using that one stamp, the artist stamp. And I also used, again, some fabric paint on that. Now something else that I did um, as far as samples wise in a video, um, I created a video with a product called Double Tack by Graphics. And I showed I think it was like five or six different backgrounds that you could make using uh, double tack. Now, if you're not familiar with double tack, it's basically um, a thin, dry adhesive sheet um, sandwiched in between two liners. So basically it's a double sided adhesive dry sheet. And I love it because number one, you don't have to wait for it to dry. And number two, it makes um, it makes it really convenient. Um, you can cut it out into whatever size, shape you want. And um, you can do a whole lot of things with a dry adhesive sheet um, and not just use it as an adhesive, not just for sticking one thing to another. You can make some really cool backgrounds. And the last sample that I have to show share with you today is this piece right here. This is, um, I haven't made jewelry in quite a while, and so this was a lot of fun. I made a video tutorial um, showing how to make that pendant, and it was using AV's epoxy sculpt as well as some Finnebear molds, and it was a lot of fun, and some recycled metal. So if you're into jewelry making, make sure that you check it out. Um, link is below. Okay. This piece right here, this is my color combination of the month. It was actually inspired by this piece right here. This top section right here just kind of made me so happy. It's really hard to catch that, but look how nice that is with the black background. And so I took colors that I thought were similar and I made this page and you will see me do that in just a bit. So there are some samples for the month. A thank you for um, sitting and listening and putting up with my rambling. Um, but for now, uh, let me show you what else was going on during the month. Okay, now I love my Ranger craft uh, sheet, nonstick craft sheet, but I got to tell you, 
I got this from my sister, this mat. It's a baking mat. It's from Kitzini, and I love it so much more. I ended up buying three more, uh, especially for a slob like me. I can just, um, I can clean up anything and everything that spills on this thing. Even if, it's been, even if it's been sitting there for a couple of days, I can still clean it, and it's heavier, and it stays in place. Love it. As I mentioned in the intro, this month's Color Joy um, is brought to you by that one mono print on the left. And I just picked out some colors and decided to make a journal page. Now, this is just the sped up version of the video. So if you want to see the um, entire video, just check out the link below. But I'm really having a blast trying these new color combinations and hope you give them a try. So I recently signed up for Kofi, which is a uh, a way to kind of support a channel um, by buying a creative a cup of coffee. And so I did this little digital drawing and man, it was tons of fun. And so you're going to see them now at the end of my videos. And if you learn something new and want to support my channel, buy me a cup of coffee on Kofi. For the last couple of years, we've gone to Halloween Horror Nights over at Universal Studios and we stay the weekend and we just have tons of fun. And so this this time around, we ended up staying at Royal Pacific, which is an on-site hotel over in Orlando. And it's right um, in the property of Universal Studios. So, you know, at the end of a very long night walking around, um, it's nice to be able to just kind of come back to the room and, and uh, veg out and not have to drive home. But, um, but they have three on-site hotels and we love them all. And we do stay on-site pretty regularly because we uh, really enjoy the parks and we've been going to them for years. Um, and what I like about this particular hotel is that it does have a lot of art hanging on the walls and sculptures and it's just overall a really beautiful hotel. Now, as far as Halloween Horror Nights, if you guys aren't familiar with it, oh my gosh. Okay, so Halloween and Christmas, that's my thing. And we just love going. Um, they have about 10 haunted houses. A lot of them, about half of the houses are themed um, or IPs, which are based on um, movies. And then the other five are um, five like original haunted houses by Universal Studios. And they are just awesome there's nothing better than going with um, your your husband and your grown son and just watching them scream and yell and I just I just crack up the whole entire time now I actually got a little bit of video uh, with the Ghostbusters house but I forgot that you're not supposed to film in there so I was it was cut short but I just got a few minutes of it uh, the whole event is just really really fun and um, I hope that you enjoy the photos and get a little bit of a taste of what it's like over at Halloween Horror Nights in Universal Studios.
So when Graphics contacted me about making the cover art for their new product, Durabrite, I just about fell off my chair. So if you're not familiar with Durabrite, it is the same product as Whitecraft Plastic, except in, it's in a pad form, and I use it all the time. So I am honored and thrilled and excited to be a part of this release. Uh, thank you, Graphics. So while I was visiting with my sisters last month, my sister Sandy made this focaccia bread and I think I was like just hypnotized watching her make it and videotape it. <laughs> but if you want the recipe, um, it was just absolutely delicious. I will put the link um, below to the recipe. And um, the only thing that I would warn you against is that once you bake it and, you know, you just might eat it all. Not that I did. I'm just saying that it is a possibility because it's that good. Um, but, uh, but yeah, check it out below. Now another scheduled video for this month was to work with the Durabrite and I took some Marabou alcohol inks, made some really easy um, designs using the inks and some household items and then cut out little circles and made some beautiful flowers. So the video should be out in a couple of days so keep an eye out for it. Now this art hack is a little different. It's actually geared towards art journaling. So it's five simple hacks for art journaling. Number one, keep a pile of the pages you don't finish or like. And if you're anything like me, you have a very large pile. Number two, if you have some extra paint on your palette, use it on one of your pages that you um, didn't finish. Don't worry if the color doesn't match, just add the paint to the page. Who knows, it just might work. Number three, stamp multiple copies of your stamps so that they are ready to use. I just purchased a whole bunch of Dina's stamps and I took each set and I stamped each image about three or four times and I do the same thing with my foam stamps and I just keep them in a little bin next to my uh, table and they're ready for me to use. Now, if I'm going to repeat an element, make sure you're using an odd number. I prefer to use three or five. It's just more pleasing to the eye. And lastly, finish off your art journal page with either white or black. I like to use either a white Sharpie or a white souffle pen or a, a black fine tip marker. Okay, so I've been thinking about the question and it's such a hard question because product development is not something that I feel comfortable giving advice on because I feel like I'm still kind of learning the ropes. But I will share my experience and my, um, I guess just my view on the whole entire thing. If you are looking to get into product development, you first have to get in with a company, right? And one of the best ways to do that is by um, joining and uh, applying for a design team. Now, if you're if you haven't watched any of uh, Finnebear's um, videos, uh, she did a whole series on design teams, and they were all super super helpful with great advice. And I think that uh, design teams are so good on so many levels. Um, not just because you're getting product out of it um, and not just because you are meeting new people, but um, it's good because it really ultimately helps to get your name out there. And uh, it's just not you promoting your stuff, it's a whole team of people promoting your stuff and vice versa. And um, I think that's really, really awesome and a great way to put yourself out there. 
Uh, it's also great because once you are established in the team and feel comfortable talking to the people or the rep uh, from the company, you can start asking questions about product development. Um, you can start asking and um, saying, you know, are you guys looking for new designers? Are you looking for um, new ideas, uh, a new person to work with? And by that point, um, the company is familiar with your work, your work ethic, your creativity, your organizational skills, your, um, you know, photo taking, video taking, all of that. They've already got that history. So a design team is a great way to, number one, start the conversation for product development and get your foot in the door. The key is keeping your foot in the door. Um, another thing that I would suggest for product development, even though, again, I feel like I'm, I'm still learning myself, is that if you are able to travel and you're able to attend, um, what are they called? <laughs> Trade shows, uh, that's something that I would definitely suggest because you can make appointments with certain companies ahead of time and you can grab a few minutes of their time and um, the key to all of that is following up after the event has passed. I don't in any way mean that you hound them and you email them every day, um, but that you are in fact professional and that you contact them and say, hey, um, I met you about a week ago over at the trade show and I'd really love to work with you. Are you guys looking for new designers? Um, so my advice is really only about just getting your foot in the door uh, because the rest is about asking questions and figuring out what each company is looking for in terms of designers uh, because every company is different yeah it's a tough question uh, and I am still figuring out the ropes. I have been fortunate to work with quite a few companies now, and they do all seem to want the same thing as far as what kind of artist they're looking for. Creativity is really just a small part of it. You do have to be organized. You do have to be well-rounded as far as social media, posting videos, uh, photo editing, things like that. And you do have to have somewhat of a following. and. Um, all of that comes along with um, putting yourself out there and sign teams and things like that. So it's, it's a tough question, but I hope that I was able to help in some way. Okay guys, so one final thought uh, before I let you go. As I mentioned earlier, I did open up a Ko-fi account and it's just an easy way to support my YouTube channel. But I also did some revamping to my website and it looks a lot cleaner and a lot sharper if I do say so myself. I spent a lot of time with it. So if you get a chance, if you're so inclined, please visit me at www.catcur.com. It just has my products, it has the companies that I work with, and um, just everything and anything all in one spot um, so uh, it's all there now I also did some um, other changes I, I will not be teaching that much next year as far as live teaching however I will be doing some online teaching and so I have opened up an Amazon influencer shop and basically it's just a place where I can direct um, folks to products that I use on a regular basis. It is a affiliate program. So if you buy something from there at no extra charge to you, I will get a kickback from it. And um, for me, it's just an easy way to direct people to some of my favorite stuff like that mat that I talked about in the beginning of this video. So um, thanks for um, listening and hanging out with me today. And thanks for um, stopping at my sites and checking out what I have to offer. All right, guys. I'll let you go. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye-bye.